Hi, I'm Patty from Dwell Community Church, and I'm back to talk about Philippians. So before we get started, let me pray for us. God, thank you so much that you're here. Thank you so much that you promise us when we open your Bible, you've got something to teach us. And I, just, I pray that this would be a sweet time of studying your Bible together. Amen. All right, so last time we were here, Brandon taught us that joy comes as we learn to think and act like Jesus. And as we go on in Paul's letter, we start to see that as we do this, we can live in a way that really stands out. When you look at this picture, what's the first thing that your eyes are drawn to? It's the red apple, right? Because it stands out. And we can stand out for a lot of different reasons. I used to work in a daycare. I took care of little kids. It was part of my job. And I was at work one day, and everybody was looking at me, which normally I like. I like to stand out. But then I realized when I looked down that there was a pair of underwear hanging out of the bottom of my pants. And so I was standing out, but it was not for the kind of reason that you would want, right? But we are going to stand out for something. Your life is going to be about something, and God wants his people to stand out for him. So we're going to study that today, and we're going to look at three things. Number one, work hard to stand out. Two, how do we do it? And three, what happens as we make that choice to live for Jesus? So let's dig in. In our verses here, it says, Dear friends, you always followed my instructions when I was with you, and now that I'm away, it is even more important. Work hard to show the results of your salvation, obeying God with deep reverence and fear, for God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Okay. Work hard to show the results of your salvation. The order here is super important. So we're going to talk about that first. A lot of times when people think of God, they think of a God like this. You know, here's Bart Simpson. He's gotten in trouble, and so he has to sit there and do this activity to punish, to be a punishment for what he's done wrong. And we often think God is that way. If I clean up my act, if I stop doing the bad things, if I start doing the good things then God will be happy with me. And that is not the message of the Bible. God's message is we can never do enough good things to earn his acceptance, and he doesn't want us to try. There's another letter that Paul wrote to the Ephesians where he says this, check this out. God saved you by his grace when you believed, and you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we've done, so none of us can boast about it. We don't, we don't get to know God by being a good person or going to church or cleaning up our act. Jesus came down because he voluntarily paid for the things that we do wrong. That's what he did when he died on the cross. And now you and now I, we get to choose. Do I want to have that forgiveness? And if you do, it's, it's turning to God and just saying, God, will you forgive me? I want you in my life. It's not how we behave. So Paul is not talking about working to get God's acceptance. So what's he saying? What's his point? Well, he is saying, because you have this relationship with Jesus, live in a way that people can see it. And this reminded me of when I got my driver's license. That's going to be coming up, right? So excited when I got my driver's license. And here's why. You could tell. I was offering to go to the store. I was offering to take care of my brother, which was unheard of. I would do anything I could to get behind the wheel of that car because I was so excited to have my driver's license. What Paul is getting at here is this idea that if you have the acceptance and the forgiveness of Jesus Christ, live in a way that people can see that you're excited about it. That's what he's trying to communicate to them. Because you have that relationship, live in a way that shows people this. So how do we do it? There's something that he said in these first verses that we really got to take a look at here that's really important. Because we often think that we got to like gut it out. Like I'm going to work really hard to do this for Jesus. But what does he say? He says, for God is working in you. We have to remember that when God asks us to work out this salvation, to work in a way that shows people who Jesus is, he's saying, I'm at work in your life to do this. And notice what he says. I'm at work to give you the desire and the power. So if you're anything like me, I don't wake up in the morning like, hey, I'm just going to show the world Jesus today. You know, I usually wake up grumpy tired these days, like what's it like out in the world today? 
I'm not thinking that way. And so what God is saying here is, I get that. So come to me and ask me. You know, go to God and say, Lord, help me live this kind of life. Help me want to live this kind of life for you. And then he's telling us he's going to give us the power to. He'll do the heavy lifting. If you decide you want your life to stand out for Jesus, he's saying, I'm going to give you everything you need to do that. So we need to remember that as we move on to this next point. How do I stand out? Well, he goes on and he tells us about this. Check this out. He says, do everything without complaining and arguing so that no one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. Okay, I don't know about you, but it's pretty hard to get past this first sentence. Do everything without complaining and arguing. When I wake up most days, I don't wake up thinking, okay, I'm going to go show Jesus to the world. I wake up grumpy or irritated or wondering what my day is going to be like or whatever. But he is talking about this whole idea of complaining. And the word here actually means like muttering or grumbling. Have you ever been around somebody who like just the only thing that comes out of their mouth are complaints? You know, my life's awful. This thing's horrible. That's thing horrible. It's really hard to be around someone who complains all the time. And it reminded me a little bit of the Dementor's Kiss in Harry Potter. You know, when you're around someone like that, it's like the joy just gets sucked out of you because it's really hard to be around a complainer. But you guys, here's the thing. It's really easy to do right now. We're living in a time that's confusing and uncertain. And we've got this pandemic and there's anger. I mean, it's a difficult time to to wade through life now. Easy for me to be a complainer. I'm not going to lie. But then we also have this issue of arguing. And that's just like this, this idea of like itching to fight. Someone who's ready to stir up trouble. Okay? Also easy to do right now. We just had something break in our house yesterday. And my inclination was quick to just be like, come on! You know, and to pick a fight about it. I think because times are so stressful right now, this whole complaining, arguing thing is something that's ringing true for me. Um, but here's the thing he's telling us not that to live a life like without those things. So what he's really getting at here is being someone who's a positive influence on the people around you. That's what he's trying to get communicate to us. And when I was thinking about this, I was thinking about a friend of mine, and she's this kind of person. She's the kind of person who, even when she's having a bad day, she's happy to see you. You know, the kind of person who's warm and smiles. And you have somebody like that. That kind of person is someone you really want to be around. She's so much so like this that I've nicknamed her Spark because she's like a spark of joy. That's the kind of person God is saying, I want you to be somebody different. I want you to stand out for good reasons. Again, our question becomes how? How do we do this? Well, he tells us, thankfully, right here in the passage, he says, hold firmly to the word of life. Then on the day of Christ's return, I will be proud that I did not run the race in vain and that my work was not useless. So he's talking about hold firmly to the word of life. He's talking about God's words. And when I was thinking about this, it reminded me of like a ship in a storm. It's a little bit what life feels like right now. Waves tossing, wind blowing. You know, a ship in a storm like that is kind of knocked all over the place. And that's a little bit how I feel right now. But if you notice... This ship is actually not moving anywhere because it has an anchor. It has something that is deeply dug into the ground that's holding it in place in the midst of the storm. And that's what God's words can be for us. Things can be coming off, you know, the wheels coming off around us. And God is saying, my words, my truth are something that you can cling to that can bring you joy, that can help you with your attitude in the midst of that hard time. And I was thinking about this with a a junior high student. Her name's Layla, and she memorized this verse when she was in sixth grade. It's the study we're going to do later. It says, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. She memorized this verse in the midst of a really difficult time for her. Okay, And what she did for a couple years, which she would recite this verse to herself over and over again to remind her, I am not alone. God is with me. He is going to help me to get through these things I'm going through. It was a life source for her. It was an anchor that kept her in place. And this is one of the things that Paul is holding out to us to do is to to cling on to God's word. So how do we do it? Read it. You know, open it up. Look at the book of John, maybe. 
start reading it. Read Philippians. We're studying it, right? Read it on your own too. Um, find somebody who's, who could be a mentor, who studied more, and talk to them about it. Memorize it. My friend Layla, she had that verse memorized so she didn't have to open a Bible every time she needed it. She could go, God, I know you're going to give me strength to get through this because she'd memorized it. And another thing you can do is go to some Bible studies. Maybe you can meet in person now. Maybe you can't. Maybe you need to Zoom, which I know can be exhausting. But do it anyway. We need that. Brad, who does some of these teachings, he has a whole bunch of YouTube stuff on Bible studies. Go check them out. They're good. The point that God is making here is that these words of his are going to give us life. You know, when things around me are crazy, I can go to what he says is true. And that's going to be something that helps me to be a positive influence in the people around me. Now he also go on and bring, and goes on and brings up another point. He says, but I will rejoice even if I lose my life, pouring it out like a liquid offering to God, just like your faithful service is an offering to God. And I want all of you to share that joy. Yes, you should rejoice and I will share your joy. Okay, what's going on here? He's talking about losing his life, about pouring it out like an offering, and he wants us to share that joy. Like, what is Paul saying? Well, what he's getting at here is that one of the ways you can be a positive influence is finding real joy by serving people around you, by doing things for other people during this time. So you might be sitting there thinking, wait a second. You're saying that if I do stuff for other people, if I think about other people, I'm going to have joy. That seems backwards to me. And I get it. You know, like what often feels like is going to bring me the most joy is doing whatever I want for however long I want. You know, if I want to eat candy till my teeth hurt, then I'm going to eat candy because it's what I want to do and that'll make me happy. And that's the way we think. But God says you're designed for something different. God says, I made you, and actually, you are going to be the most happy when you are about other people. And that's what he says. This is one of my favorite verses in the whole Bible. This is Jesus talking in John 15, and he says, There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. He's saying there is nothing greater than being about other people, laying your life down for other people. How? What does that look like? What does that look like in the midst of COVID? Well, reach out to people, you know, text, snap, whatever. Reach out to people and check on them, see how they're doing and pray for people. That's something you can do without even getting out of your bed in the morning is to pray for your friends, to pray for your family, your neighborhood, the city, whatever. That is a way you can actually do something incredibly powerful for another person is to pray for them and get creative. You know, there's this crazy thing called the mail. You can actually put a card with a stamp on it and it can go to someone's house. I know it's unheard of, but you know how fun it is to get mail? Just to know that somebody was thinking about you or put on some gloves and make some chocolate chip cookies and drop them off. Do the dishes without being asked. I don't know. You can get real creative with this. And my hope is with some discussion questions at the end, we can brainstorm ways. Because it's true, we're limited now in ways that we haven't been before. But find ways to do, th do something for other people. That is how you can be a positive influence. These are the things Paul is saying that are going to help you to be a positive influence on the people around you. Okay, so what are the results? What are your eyes drawn to right now? They're drawn to the smiley face, the yellow smiley face. The results are you can stand out for a bunch of really awesome reasons. You can stand out because you are showing people the power of God in your life. You are showing people what it's like to have your life transformed by the forgiveness and acceptance of Jesus Christ. They're going to see it in how you live, and you will stand out for all the best kinds of reasons. So let's wrap this up. What is it that he's talking about here in this section? Well, number one, he's saying to work hard to have your life stand out. But you have to remember, God is the one who's at work. He is the one who's going to give you the desire and the power to be able to live this kind of way, which brings me incredible comfort to know, right, that God will do that. Number two, how do I stand out? Well, it's by being a positive influence. Our world needs people who are going to be a positive influence right now, and you can be one of those people. 
God can enable you to life change people by being a positive influence. And the way that we often do that is by getting those words of life that help change the way we think. You know, my thoughts are dark sometimes. God's words bring life and find ways to serve people. And the results are you will shine like a bright light. You will stand out. I don't know if you've ever been out in the country where there's no light pollution and you look up in the sky and it's an incredibly beautiful picture of the bright lights that are in the sky. This is what people who know Jesus can look like in a world that needs it. And we need it. You can stand out. You can be that bright light. All right. So I promised discussion questions. Here they are. Let me pray for us and then find somebody to talk to about this stuff. God, thank you so much that you were willing to do what you did on the cross so that I could have a relationship with you. And I pray that if there's anyone right now listening who hasn't done that, that they would just turn to you and say, Jesus, I want your forgiveness. I want you in my life. And for those of the people listening who have that relationship, help us find ways to stand out in the world that we live in, Lord. Help us be your example. Amen.